The screencast covers the material from Module 4, Lesson 18, where we're multiplying decimals by decimals. And we're going to learn a little shortcut and make some connections here today and really get more toward the standard algorithm like the one your parents have been taught. Okay, as we've done in the previous lesson, we're going to do this a couple ways. We're going to use unit form, and then we're going to use fraction form. Then we're going to uh, connect the another idea for how to place the decimals. So we'll set up this first problem. We have 6 and 6 tenths, which is 66 tenths. And we'll multiply it by 2 and 8 tenths is 28 tenths. We have 8 times 6 is 48, regroup the 4. And 8 times 6 is 48 once again, 48 plus 4 is 52. Now we'll insert our 0 because we're multiplying from the tens place. And 2 times 6 is 12, regroup the 1. And 2 times 6 is 12 again, plus 1 is 13. We're going to find the sum of the partial products. And since we have tenths and tenths, the answer is in hundredths. Now we're going to change that hundredths to a standard form. And what is that? Well, we know that there are two decimal places in hundredths, so it would be 18 and 48 hundredths. But I want to take a look at the, a connection we want to make here. We notice that the first factor has one decimal place. The second factor has one decimal place. Therefore, the product is going to have two decimal places. So, again, we count two decimal places, and we have 18 and 48 hundredths. We're going to do this in a decimal form as well. So we have 66 tenths times 28 tenths, and that equals 66 times 28 over 10 times 10, and the product of 66 and 28 is 1,848, and 10 times 10 is 100, and we end up with 18 and 48 hundredths. Let's do the next one, just to make sure we have several examples for you to look at here. Just squeeze that over, make some space. And again, we're going to use our unit forms, but we're going to lose that. We're going to get to the standard algorithm uh, in the upcoming lessons here. So I have 33 tenths. 3 and 3 tenths is 33 tenths. And I have 14 tenths. We're going to find our partial products. 4 times 3 is 12. Regroup that one. 4 times 3 is still 12. Plus 1 is 13. And we put our 0 in. And this is easy. We're multiplying by 1. <clears throat> find the sum of our partial products. And we get 462 hundredths. And, again, we're going to write that here, 462. And noticing that we have one decimal in the first uh, factor, one in the second factor, meaning that we have one, two decimal places, one, two. So we'll insert that decimal between the four and the six. Let's uh, do it in fractional form. 33 tenths times 14 tenths equals 33 times 14 over 10 times 10. We'll find our products. We have 462 over 100, and of course that's 4 and 62 hundredths. Simple. We'll do one more example. We'll look at a word problem, and then we'll just compare that word problem with the one that you have in your homework. This one's slightly different in that we have a one of our factors goes to the hundredth, so we have two decimal places here in the first factor and one in the second factor. Therefore, we can expect three decimal places in our product. 
let's start with the unit form. I have 8 and 31 hundredths is 831 hundredths times 24 tenths. And we'll start our multiplication. We have 4, 12, regroup the 1, 32 plus 1 is 33. Put in our 0, and we get a 2, and a 6, and a 16. Find the sum of those two, and we get 4, and a 4, and a 9, and a 9, <coughs> and a 1. Okay, we know that we have hundredths and tenths, so that would be thousandths. All right, so now we are going to just look here. We have two decimal places, and we have one there. So I'm going to copy this. Since I have two decimal places here and one here, I have three decimal places. So we're going to insert that decimal between the 9 and the 9. So one last time, we're going to use the fractional form, 831 hundredths times 24 tenths, and that's 831 times 24 over 100 times 10. We find the product. We have 19,944 1, over 1,000, and that equals, of course, 19 and 944 thousandths. Let's look at a word problem. The other word problems are pretty simple. Uh, this one's a little more complex. Not that more com much more complex, but there are two parts to it, two steps. Now, I'm, I'm going to shift over to uh, the standard algorithm for this one. And we're going to simply write this in decimal form. Making a shift here, your teacher may want it in unit form or fractional form or both. But I'm, I'm going to move along here and write this as a standard algorithm problem. So I have 3 and 75 hundredths, and if I did that in unit form, it would be 375 hundredths, and I have 4 and 2 tenths. Notice that I don't line up the decimals. So, let's begin. So, 2 times 5 is 10, regroup by 1. 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1 is 15, regroup by 1. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. We'll insert our 0 because we're multiplying from the tens place. And we have 4 times 5 is 20, regroup the 2. 4 times 7 is 28, plus 2 is 30, regroup the 3. And 4 times 3 is 12, plus 3 is 15. We'll find the sum of our partial products. We have a 0, a 5, a 7, 1, and we have the 1,000, or 15,750. Now, what do we have here? If we look at the first uh, factor, the top one, we have two decimal places. The second factor has 1, so we expect a total of 3. So I can count 1, 2, 3, and I'll insert that decimal right there. Now, we notice that the answer is 15 and 750 thousandths, but I also know that that is equal to 15 and 75 hundredths. And that's what I'm going to use for the second part here. It just gets rid of one decimal place. Let's read the second problem. It says the area of the living room is one and a half times that of the kitchen. Find the total area of the living room and the kitchen. Okay, well, I'm going to have to use this information here on the top. I want to find the area of the living room. And then I'm going to have to combine that with the area of the kitchen. So I'm going to, I'm going to make a tape diagram here. And I'm going to label 1 the kitchen. And that is 15 and 75 hundredths. And we have the living room, 
which is one and a half times. Okay, so that's L. We're going to have to find the sum of those, and that will answer our question. So let's begin. Well, if I, it's one and a half times, I need to multiply it by one and a half, and we'll use that in decimal form. So it's 1.5, or 1 and 5 tenths. So 1, 15, and 75 hundredths times 1 and 5 tenths. Notice again, I did not line up my decimals. Multiply, find our partial products. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 7 is 35, plus 2 is 37. Regroup my 3. 5 times 5 is 25, once again. Plus 3 is 28. Regroup that 2. One times 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 is 7. The next place is easy because we're multiplying by the 1's. Insert our 0. Copy our digits down. Find the sum. And what do we get? Oh, I forgot to regroup here. That is 23,625 thousandths. Uh, again, we're going to use our algorithm here, though. We know that our first factor has two decimal places, our second has one. So we need three decimal places, so we'll insert that between the three and the six. So now we know the value of this part here is 23 and 625 thousandths. Let's find the sum. Now remember, when we find the sum and we add or subtract decimal numbers, we need to line up the decimals. So I have 15 and 75 hundredths. I have 23 and 625 thousandths. Notice that the decimals are lined up. I could pre-place my decimal in my sum here. Now if you don't like this blank space over here uh, in the 15 and 75 hundredths, I can put a zero there. And zero plus five is five. Five plus two is seven. Seven plus six is 13. Regroup that one. And five plus three is eight. Plus one is nine. And one plus two is three. So the area, the combined area, and again we should make our statement, of the kitchen and the living room is 39 and 375 thousandths of a meter squared. Let's look at the homework. Again, we're finding area. We have the area of a swimming pool this time. And again, we have another thing, a playground here, that is one and a half times that of the swimming pool. Find the total area of the swimming pool in the playground. Well, that's uh, really almost identical to the previous problem. So you can refer back to that, but let's just outline it. First, we need to find the area of the swimming pool. Then we need to find the area of the playground. And then we need to find the sum of the two.